Frieza! Reddit's gaped at the metallic being claiming to be the butcher of the Saiyan race. How can you be alive? Cooler killed you! Hm. Frieza snickered. He made a mistake. He wanted to be dramatic as usual and hurled my head into space. After drifting for months in a state of hibernation, I encountered the artificial consciousness known as the Getty Star. It tried to absorb my mind and knowledge, but it was easily dominated by a superior will. It tested the technology of the Getty Star to the limit, as well as my ability to survive even the greatest injury. But I endured. And now, I have returned stronger than ever to find that the Super Saiyan has taken care of my brother for me. He indicated himself, banging one hand off his glistening chest with a loud clang. In this form, I'm far stronger than I have ever been! Now I can truly claim the title of the most powerful being in the universe. So, little monkey, run and fetch me the Super Saiyan. He's your brother, isn't he? Reddits realized that, of course, Goku had been easily more powerful than the brothers at the time, and Frieza had died before the legend had truly been fulfilled. Then he's in for a surprise. You want the Super Saiyan, Frieza? His aura burned around him, shifting from purple to blue, through white to bright yellow as a golden streak rippled through his hair. He's right here! The ground cracked under his feet as he completed his transformation. Raditz? Hmm. Frieza half smiled. Now there's a surprise. Ah well, it's all the same to me. One primate as good as another. He leapt forwards, whipping his tail around, but Raditz jumped over it, grabbing Frieza in a headlock. I should thank you, Frieza! The long-haired Saiyan told his foe. The heat from his aura warping Frieza's metal skin slightly. This way, you'll be killed by a Saiyan, not in some family squabble, and our race will have our revenge! Frieza twisted out of his hold, but Raditz dodged the reborn ruler's punch and kicked him to the floor. Frieza reached down behind him, pushing up the floor just as Raditz smashed into the ground where he'd been lying. This left Raditz open, and still flipping backwards through the air, Frieza whirled around bringing both knees down and driving Raditz to the floor. The Super Saiyan brought his arms up, firing a two-handed blast of energy that propelled him further down into the earth, hiding himself from Frieza. The tyrant flew up, away from the ground, awaiting Raditz's next attack. Come out where I can see you already! He yelled impatiently. An answer, energy bolts started flying free of the ground from all around him, launched at him from every direction. Frieza grimaced, dodging one way, then the other, as the crisscrossing beams arced and streaked past him. ENOUGH OF THIS! He thrust a hand down, launching a massive wave of invisible force that destroyed the entire island. Raditz rocketed out of the smoke cloud, almost unharmed, and slammed his fist right through Frieza's stomach before he could react. Raditz pulled his fist out, kicking Frieza away. Frieza landed with a heavy thud on a nearby island, lying still for a second. Just as Raditz was halfway through... He thought, that was far too easy. A mechanical whirring and clicking came from the body, and before long Frieza stood back up, the hole in his body closing, appearing none the worse for wear. Do you see now? Frieza indicated the former wound. The Getty Star monitors this body, repairing any injuries and improving on errors. Letting you injure me was a serious error, meaning I'm now far stronger and faster. How many times will it take before you're outmatched, I wonder? He grinned. And disappeared. Raditz spun to try and spot his enemy, hearing the unmistakable crackle of charging energy above him and looking up to see Frieza hurling a sizable energy ball his way. There was no time to dodge. Acting on a reflex, Raditz was suddenly several meters away. The stern of events confused the both of them until Raditz realized something. Ha! Huh. So it is possible to use instant transmission without making the sign. A little draining, though. Instant transmission? Frieza raised an eyebrow. You know it too. Wait, what's this, too? Alright, skip the introductions, Piccolo grunted, throwing off his weighted cape and turban. You want revenge, blah blah blah, daddy, blah blah blah, I'm the future rule of this world, so I'm going to turn you inside out. Let's go! He flew towards Kariza at full speed, and was promptly sent flying back just as fast by a thin purple energy beam that shot out of one of Kariza's fingers. I guess teamwork is a concept Piccolo hasn't quite mastered yet, Krillin noted, sighing. Kariza smiled. Is that really all? Not nearly! Piccolo appeared behind Kariza, hammering him into the nearest mountain with both fists. However, Kariza copied his appear-behind-your-opponent trick, kicking Piccolo into the air, 
and then smacking him down into the ground with his tail. Piccolo lay unmoving in a crater. Well, that was easy enough. Kariza dusted himself off. I do hope he wasn't your best. As a matter of fact, he wasn't. Tien called to the invader. Hey, does anybody else want a shot at him before Goku and I clean up? What? Kariza's eyes widened. Are you toying with me? Letting me fight the small fry for your amusement? Not really, Goku shrugged. It's just that if we fought you, it'd be over too quickly. So we're letting the others have a turn. Fine. I don't care what order I fight you. I'll take my revenge for what you did to my father. One way or another. Um, Goku looked faintly puzzled. You, you do know it was Cooler who killed Frieza, right? What did you say? Kariza's eyes narrowed. You're lying. If you're trying to confuse me, it won't work. However you tricked my father, I won't fall for it. You talk too much. Nail called out, jumping into battle and kicking Kariza in the face. Kariza stood perfectly still, unaffected. I played with the other Namek, but I'm bored now, he said. I'm going to finish this lot, and then I'll get to you two, the real fighters. He indicated Goku and Tien, that returned his attention to Nail, who had drawn his leg back and was now smashing relentless blows into Kariza's body, to no visible effect. Kariza reached out with his mind, throwing Nail into the ground far below. Krillin and Yantra rushed him from opposite sides, and Kariza let loose another energy beam that caught Krillin's shoulder and sent him flying through the air. Yamcha continued his charge, hurling a blue energy blast at Frieza. Hmm. Yamcha continued his charge, hurling a blue energy blast at Kariza. Kamehameha! He shouted, but Kariza sidestepped the attack as if it was moving in slow motion, lashing out with his tail and sending Yamcha flying. Krillin rose again, ready to resume the fight. Well, here goes nothing. Kaioken! The flame red Kaioken aura left a life around Krillin's body and he flew in an arc towards Kariza, who simply hovered in the air, bored, a flat disk of energy forming in one hand. Tianzan ha! Kariza's eyes widened as the disk grew close, and he twitched to one side, a shallow gash opening up in his cheek as the razor-sharp attack hissed by him, slicing through one of his armor's shoulder plates, its speed boosted by the Kaioken. Kariza hissed in annoyance. You're giving me more trouble than I imagined. So, prepare to face the greatest power in the universe! Kariza's armor exploded off of him. A flare of red light engulfed his body. And when it cleared, he resembled Frieza's final form. Only, of course, still shorter, and with the red highlights to his mostly white body. His transformation was much quicker than Frieza's, Goku noted. Uh, Kariza, was it? I don't think that's the greatest power in the universe. Huh? What are you saying? Kariza eyed Goku with suspicion. Well, both Freeze and Cooler had a large key than you do now, not to mention King Cold. When Raditz became the Super Saiyan, he was on their level too. And where is this Super Saiyan? He's... not here right now, Tien supplied lamely. King Kai had told him that Raditz was on an important mission in space, but had been sketchy on the details. Sure, your lies aren't really that hard to see through, you know. Kariza stretched his limbs. Anyway, time to finish up here. It must have been one of you that murdered him, so if I kill all of you, I'm bound to get the right one. And, let me guess, you'll destroy the planet just to be safe? Tien asked. No, I... I mean, uh, yes! Absolutely! I'm the new ruler of this universe, I'll do whatever I like! He seemed hesitant about this, and wheels began to turn in Goku's mind. I wonder... Hey! I'm still here, you know! Krillin flew out towards the transformed Frieza. His powers increased a lot with that transformation. Looks like I need to go all out. Kaioken times three! The red light intensified, and Krillin's flight sped up dramatically. He lunged at Kariza, who casually dodged, but the young Frost Demon wasn't expecting him to follow up, and Krillin's elbow impacted with Kariza's face. While surprised by the fighter's reflexes, Kariza didn't seem to be bothered by the actual attack, and he simply stared at Krillin, looking mildly irritated. Krillin backed away, powering down. Uh, why don't you guys handle this one, huh? I think I need to practice the Kaioken a bit more before I get involved in battles on this scale. Ah, so they finally break out the big guns, Kariza said with a smile, ignoring the fleeing Krillin as Goku and Tien faced off against him. Hey, Goku, how about giving me the first round, Tien asked. Sure thing, just save some for me, Goku was grinning. It's not often I get to fight an opponent on this level. I can hardly wait. Do you think this is a game? 
Kariza stuttered in disbelief at their casual attitude. I just beat all of their other fighters. Can these two be that much stronger than the rest? Raditz and Frieza flickered in and out of visible sight, battling back and forth between Namek and the link dimension used by instant transmission. Raditz would launch an attack on Namek, only for Frieza to jump into the instant transmission dimension to dodge. Then when Raditz appeared in that dimension, jump back to Namek, only to be hit by an attack from behind, since Raditz could choose where he wanted to appear on the planet. It added an entirely new and confusing dimension to the battle. However, Raditz soon became exhausted from using the complex technique so much in such a short space of time. Though he didn't know it, using instant transmission was taxing Frieza systems too, and he was almost running over capacity. Their interdimensional battle ended as, simultaneously, they decided to conserve their energy for more traditional fighting. Raditz braced himself as Frieza charged him, blocking two punches with his raised forearms. But Frieza's strength and speed had, as promised, both increased since he'd repaired himself. And his third punch slipped right through Raditz's guard, his fists knocking the wind out of Raditz's stomach. Frieza knocked him away, the Super Saiyan skidding along the grass as Frieza advanced towards him. <sighs> Damn it! I've landed plenty of good hits, but it's just not phasing him anymore. He jumped to his feet as Frieza prepared to attack again. I won't give up, though. There's no such thing as an invincible enemy. Frieza raised one hand, ready to continue his onslaught, when a voice interrupted him. Gallic Gun! A thick, yellow-white energy beam smashed into Frieza's back, bowling him over. He stumbled back up, glaring at Vegeta. The Saiyan Prince proudly hovering a short distance away, staring down at Frieza. A bright aura rippled around his form, his golden hair standing on end. Somehow, he'd become a Super Saiyan. V Vegeta? Frieza was taken aback. When did you get here? Vegeta landed between the two combatants. Well, I couldn't help sensing such a large key. I decided it was worth investigating. And what do I find but the tyrant himself back from the dead and fighting the Super Saiyan? Don't get me wrong, though. When I'm done with Frieza, you're next, Kaku. Rot. He just turned around, seeing Raditz up close and in detail for the first time. No. No! Not you! He flew into a rage, the wind picking up as he bellowed in anger. I pushed myself past my limits, conquered dozens of worlds simply as practice. I achieved this legendary form, and I did it on a lie! Not Vegeta too. Raditz couldn't believe his eyes. What kind of emotional trauma could possibly drive Vegeta to transform? He expected the prince to go for Frieza first, but instead Vegeta charged directly at Raditz, and the low-class Saiyan was hard-pressed to block his frenzied attacks. Kakarot was the one, not you! Vegeta landed a solid punch to Raditz's jaw, then kicked him to the ground, continuing his vicious beatdown as Raditz cried out in pain. I had just come to terms with Kakarot being the Super Saiyan. It was obvious he had potential, from the moment I met him. But not you! You never amounted to anything! Raditz rolled to the side, catching Vegeta's fist and struggling to hold his furious attacker back. You should have just died on Namek, Raditz! That a joke like you could attain this transformation, the pinnacle of our warrior race! It's an insult to all Saiyans! It should have been Kakarot, or better still, me! Will you shut up? Raditz ducked under his next rage-filled swing, responding with a quick uppercut that staggered Vegeta back. You are always talking about our great warrior race and our pride. Oh, where did pride get to say it, huh? Dead! And you, clinging to the old ways, you were left behind by my brother and I. He raised his guard. Just let go! You don't like the way things happened? It's too late to change it now! Frieza cut him off, crashing into Raditz with both feet and knocking him into the ocean. If I might interrupt this little reunion, he said with a smirk. Two Super Saiyans, I see. Well, this should be fun. Ha! Vegeta summoned up all his energy, forming a crater around him as the land buckled under his power. Veins stood out on his forehead and neck. Tell me, Frieza, now you're a machine. Do you still experience fear? What? Frieza never got to voice his reply, as Vegeta's knee collided with his face. Vegeta kept up the attack, pushing Frieza slowly back. However, 
Frieza's superior speed meant that eventually, when Vegeta aimed a fraction too far to the right, Frieza was able to take full advantage of the opening and launch a vicious counterattack. He raised his leg to knock Vegeta out of the way, when Raditz sped out of the water to rejoin the battle. The three fighters battled back and forth, ducking and twisting between each other as each found his attention divided between two opponents. Raditz and Vegeta blocked each other's attacks, and Frieza kicked them in the stomach, but they turned and punched him simultaneously, overwhelming his defenses. Frieza grabbed Raditz and slammed him into the ground face first, and Vegeta kicked him off balance, allowing Raditz to jump up, fire a quick energy blast that took Vegeta off his feet, and charged back at Frieza. Alright Tien, you're up. Goku gave his rival and friend a thumbs up. Good luck. Right, I'll do my best. Tien effortlessly flared up his Kaioken aura, building his power until he reached his comfortable maximum, about a ten times increase. Alright, Kariza, let's do this! Kariza nodded and flew at Tien, who jumped up and away. Kariza swiped at Tien but missed, pursuing the Agile Warrior. Kariza soon caught up, and they entered into a rapid exchange of blows. However, Kariza's defense was sloppy, and Tien soon landed a solid hit that sent Kariza hurling away. Tien dodged a rapidly fired energy beam and straightened up just in time to see Kariza charging again, the would-be Avenger's fist cracking into his jaw. Kariza followed up with a spinning tail strike that knocked Tien through a mountain. He recovered, starting to breathe heavily as his injuries began to catch up with him. He's got an advantage in power, but I have skill. Not to mention I've still got plenty in reserve. Tien decided it was time to go all out and narrowed his eyes as he focused on his rapidly approaching target. Kaioken! Times 20! Now Tien gets serious, Goku smiled. Grease has been playing around with us so far. This will be a chance to see his full power. Tien swiped at Kariza, but his enemy somersaulted over his head. And with one powerful elbow strike, Tien fell away, clutching at his back. Goku frowned. Uh, that's not good. I'm not much stronger than Tien using his maximum Kaioken boost. Here I was thinking I might have an easy battle for a change. Goku and Kuriza hung in the air facing each other. Hmm, with your hair you look a little like a Saiyan. Maybe it was you who killed my father. I'm telling you it was cooler! Goku insisted. Enough! I know it was you! Kuriza prepared himself for battle, but Goku moved quickly, punching Kuriza square in the chest. The force of the blow knocked Kuriza backwards through the air. But he righted himself and spat in disgust. Ha! Weak. Say, Goku's mind was still making connections. You're just a kid, aren't you? What has that got to do with anything? Kariza shrieked. Don't underestimate me because of my age. I'm the strongest in the universe! No. You really aren't. Damn it, what's Raditz doing that's so important right now? Well, look. I can still sense all my friends' energy. You didn't kill any of them. So? Kariza's eyes twitched. I'm going to! Just you wait. Then I'll destroy it. Right, you'll destroy the planet. Sure. Goku scratched his head. You're not really all that evil, are you? Shut up! Kariza kicked Goku to the ground, the Saiyan falling almost a mile before crashing into the hard, jagged earth. He pushed himself up, gasping for air, but Kariza landed on his back with both feet, driving him down again. Goku rolled away, lying on his back and breathing raggedly. But what is with this guy? He won't listen to reason while he has the upper hand. He's not accepting a word I say, but I know he can't be as bad as his family. He's just doing this because it's how he's brought up. He can still be saved. If he doesn't kill me first. Goku heaved himself into a sitting position, feeling his body groan in protest. Kuriza appeared suddenly, inches away kicking Goku back down into the dirt. How dare you defy my family! Family? You want to know about family? Goku asked, his voice cracked. Your Uncle Cooler killed your father, just so he could become more powerful. But when I was in trouble, my brother got so angry, he transformed into a Super Saiyan. That's how Cooler died. He was killed by a Saiyan. One who knew what family really meant. What's with you? Kariza looked worried. Why would he keep lying if he knew he was about to die? I know it's not your fault, kid, Goku thought. It's just how you were raised. Those bastards! 
You deserve better than them in a family. But you won't listen to me unless I stop this madness. And to do that, I need more power. I can't do this as I am. His mind was free from all thoughts of revenge for this attack on his home. Or even his usual excitement at fighting a challenging opponent. He had only sadness and pity for this child, who would probably grow up to be just like his father, shaped into a monster by a cold universe. No! I won't let it keep happening. Nobody has to die. If only he'd listen. If only I was stronger! He clenched his fist, his fingernails digging into his flesh until they drew blood. I've beaten so many enemies. I can't fail now. The one time I might be able to save one! He was growing angry, angry beyond belief, but not with Kariza, with himself. The sky rumbled, and a bolt of lightning struck the ground inches from Goku as he lay in the dirt. It's such an injustice! I can see where his path leads, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. And the whole earth is going to pay the price! It's not fair! His fist hammered to the ground as he pushed himself up to a crouching position. Kariza watched amused. The thunderstorm continued, and lightning racked the skies. N another bolt struck, right between the two fighters. Why can't I do anything? I can't fail now! <sighs> Too many people are relying on me! A wave of heat rushed up from inside of him. Deep inside, he felt a presence rushing to the surface, pulling him to his feet with a violent jerk. Something primal filled the air beyond the capability of words to describe. This cycle of blind hate. It had gone on too long. It ends now! A blaze of golden light erupted around Goku. His hair, lifted by some unseen force, stood up on end, glowing brightly. His eyes shifted their color from black to sharp, piercing green. His face hardened as he came to understand what had happened to him. King Kai's attention was finally diverted away from the battle on New Namek. I don't believe it! Goku transformed? But he was angry only at himself. He ascended almost out of compassion. Incredible. Only silence answered him. Oh, right. Krillin left. I sure am lonely. Goku glared at Kariza. You see what you've done? Dyed your hair blonde? Kariza asked, still ignorant. I'm getting bored. He lunged at Goku, landing a flailing punch to the hero's face. But Goku didn't flinch. Kariza jumped back, hissing and waving his hand. It was like punching a brick wall. Well, like a normal person punching a brick wall. If Kariza had punched one, it would have disintegrated. But in any case, the Frost Demon could tell something was different about his opponent. He swiveled, frowning in frustration as he fired an energy beam from each forefinger. Goku just glanced at them, and they were diverted away from him, flying up and away into the atmosphere. I hope you're happy. Goku twitched, and suddenly stood behind Kariza, one hand gripping his enemy's tiny neck. Kariza choked, scrabbling at Goku's hand, but unable to shift it. You've unleashed something terrible, and I don't know if I can stop it. Goku growled. Please! Kariza's eyes bulged. He, he writhed under Goku's unbreakable grip. Don't wanna die. <sighs> Goku could feel it pounding in his head. It was like a wild animal tearing up his brain. It wanted him to kill. He almost wanted to kill. It knew only battle. There was injustice. There was an enemy. He had to fight it. No! That's not why I transformed! I have to save him! Kariza's kind had wiped out the Saiyans. There had to be revenge. There had to be justice. Those are not the same thing. Too many people have died already. This one, I can save! The Saiyan in him howled for blood. The human in him resisted. No more! Raditz and Vegeta crashed into the ground, lying next to each other as they pulled themselves out of the dirt once again. This is hopeless, Vegeta muttered. It's ridiculous. How could Raditz become a Super Saiyan? And how could that worm Frieza ever surpass one? 
He shook his head. It's not over yet! I am the Prince of Saiyans! I won't stop fighting while there's breath in my body! How about... on Earth? Raditz asked, climbing to his feet. And Namek! You retreated there! That was... I... Shut up! This is different! I'm not running from Frieza of all people! Vegeta raised a fist to attack Raditz again. Wait! Raditz held up a hand, warily eyeing Frieza, who was slowly advancing on the right. Look, it's obvious we're both outmatched here. If we keep this up, Frieza will kill us both. Let me guess. You want us to work together. Over your dead body! Vegeta spat. Think about it! Raditz growled. Don't throw your life away, Vegeta. Surely, if there's one enemy, one being in the universe, Saiyans can set aside their differences to fight. It's Frieza! I... I... Vegeta's father flashed through his mind. He thought of the last time he'd seen their planet. There were so few of them left. As soon as he's dead, you're going to follow him. Do you understand? Perfectly. The Saiyans turned to face their approaching foe. Let's get this done. Frieza tensed as he prepared to move in for another attack. I'm enjoying this far more than I should. He rushed in, throwing a high kick at Vegeta, but Raditz intercepted, catching his foot and allowing Vegeta to get an elbow strike past Frieza's guard. Frieza spun away, but Raditz appeared behind him, kicking him in the side, and Vegeta brought his hands around, smashing the dazed Frieza on either side of the head. Frieza jumped away, his head spinning. They stopped fighting each other! What happened to that foolish pride they're always on about? Raditz started hurling a barrage of energy waves that crashed into Frieza's silvery body, scoring deep rents in his skin. Frieza staggered back, the continuous attack overwhelming his resistance. As he was preparing to dodge out of the way, Vegeta materialized above him, one hand held downwards, palm facing away from himself. Hey Frieza! Ready to face the full power of a real Super Saiyan! I think on balance machines do experience fear. Frieza thought to himself. BIG BAG ATTACK! A shimmering white ball of energy shot out of Vegeta's hand, streaking down towards Frieza. Too easy! Frieza dodged to the left, but Raditz followed him, taking advantage of his opponent's preoccupation with Vegeta's attack, and shoving him right into its path. Frieza futilely braced for impact, as a crackling energy ball smashed into his form, completely obliterating him. Vegeta and Raditz settled to the ground as the dust cleared. There was no trace of Frieza left at all. Quite an attack you've got there, Raditz commented. Indeed. Vegeta raised his guard, turning to face Raditz. And you're about to experience it firsthand. All right. Have it your way, Raditz smiled. I won't pretend I'm not going to enjoy this. I love these rare opportunities to exercise my full Super Saiyan power. A power you don't deserve. Let's go! Vegeta charged in, and Raditz blocked his first punch. The long-haired Saiyan was just raising his arm for a counterattack, when a familiar voice cut through the air. Excuse me! The Super Saiyans froze, turning slowly to the right. The metallic Frieza stood on a ridge above them, fully intact. I wouldn't be too hasty. What? Vegeta gaped in surprise. How the hell did you survive that attack? Oh, I didn't. Frieza grinned tilting his head to the side a little. At least this body didn't. But the Getty Star made me more than just one body. He sp As he spoke, gleaming dots of reflected sunlight started to appear over the horizon behind him. Dozens, maybe hundreds of metallic Frieza clones were swarming towards them. These bodies are my meta Freezers. My real form is safe on the Getty Star itself. Given how much effort it took you to defeat just one meta Freezer, I'd say an army should prove more than sufficient to crush you. Especially since, due to the Getty Star's self-repair system correcting for the error that allowed my body to be destroyed, each of these Metafreezers is now more powerful than the one you just fought. The Metafreezer talking dropped into step with the others as they passed it. Well, that does it. Vegeta clenched his fist. We're going to die here. Two Super Saiyans, and we're still going to be killed by Frieza. It's like the universe has it in for us! Hmm. Vegeta! Raditz rubbed his chin thoughtfully. I think we have two options here. We have more than one option. 
Vegeta asked skeptically. Is one of them committing suicide? Raditz sighed. Shut up and listen. First, we can charge them and go out in a blaze of glory. Doesn't sound too bad a way to die. Second, I've just come up with a rather unlikely plan that has a chance of getting us both out of here alive. The better to kill each other somewhere else with less say a cytical robots. It's not a word! Does it matter? Vegeta kicked Raditz in the shin. Just tell me your damn plan already! All right, all right. The army was taking its time, showing off, but they'd reach the Saiyans pretty soon. Look, Frieza and I both now have a technique called instant transmission. It lets us instantly move anywhere. Got that? I understand the concept. Get on with it! Vegeta growled. We don't have much time, or hadn't you noticed? Look, the point is, Frieza was pretty surprised to learn that I knew instant transmission. If, when, they attack. I use it to jump away to somewhere on the other side of this planet. They might try and follow me. Then you use normal speed to head straight for the Getty Star. If I'm right, it's that big metal starfish that's clamped onto the planet like a parasite. Keep your power level down, but still try to move as fast as possible. How will this help us, exactly? Vegeta frowned. The plan was starting to sound increasingly untenable. Look, if we both disappear simultaneously, Frieza will probably assume that we're both using the same technique. If you can mask your energy and slip past him while I lead him on an instant transmission while Goose chase around the planet, you can get inside the Getty Star. Vegeta began to understand. And that's where he said his true form is. It's got to be his weak spot. Of course. You may have defenses inside, so it's not going to be easy. Maybe even more of these metafreezes. I can take care of myself, Raditz. Here they come. Let's do it. Right. Raditz and Vegeta stood a few feet apart as the army of metafreezes approached. They raised two fingers to their foreheads in unison, Vegeta carefully mimicking Raditz. As the Metafreezes descended, the Saiyan warriors disappeared. Frieza picked up Raditz's energy signature, obviously heading to the other side of the planet. On a reflex, the Metafreezes used instant transmission themselves, following Raditz's trail. I can't sense Vegeta at all, here or with Raditz. He must be more skilled at concealing it. Well, better to follow one monkey than stand still and lose them both. Vegeta raced along the surface of New Nanak, trying to find a balance between hiding his power and increasing his speed. This is perfect! Raditz has attracted Frieza's attention, which means all I have to do is go and dig out the real Frieza. It's almost too easy! The Getty Star, a misshapen lump of shifting gray metal, loomed on the horizon, clamped onto the planet as if it was sucking the life out of it. Vegeta, barely able to wait to get his hands on Frieza and finish him off once and for all, began his approach. The outer wall of the Getty Star was blasted open by a purple energy wave as Vegeta breached its hold. Where are you, Frieza? I'm going to tear you apart! Well, there you have it. Chapter 24 will finish this pair of battles, and sometime in the next few chapters, I'll deal with what happened to Vegeta, Frieza, Kariza, and so on in the future timeline. Rest assured, I haven't forgotten about them. Oh, and you should probably go and look up the Tao of Dragon Ball. It's an amazing site by a guy called Derek, whose surname I can't spell. It consists of extracts from his forthcoming book, The Tao of Dragon Ball, which is an in-depth look at the deeper meaning of the series. What's this? It's just a dumb action show? It doesn't have a deeper meaning? Yes, it is a dumb action show, but it is actually a very clever dumb action show drawing influences from thousands of years of Eastern and Western culture, and there's plenty to write about. You can also buy his other shorter book that's out right now, It's Over 9000, When Worldviews Collide, which explores the rivalry between Goku and Vegeta, the symbolism of Scouters and Ki, and the Over 9000 meme. Do I sound like an advert? Well, no, he didn't pay me to write this. I just, I just bought When Worldviews Collide and loved it, and apparently sales are slow. They shouldn't be. Trust me on this. Go. Go forth and read it. It has a cool anecdote in it about how Dragon Ball stopped some guy from committing suicide and saved their life. Anyway, you're probably getting bored, so I have some answers to the great eternal questions. What is the meaning of life? Where shall we have lunch? And just what does the scouter say about his power level? So is Metafreeza as strong as Metacooler was? Example, able to kick the crap out of two Super Saiyans? It seems that way, doesn't it? Hmm, this chapter had two things upsetting for Gohan fans. Although he does get his power boost in training, 
Goku leaving him behind. I know you're trying to show that Breakthrough Limit Goku has a better relationship than Canon Goku, but that's taking it a bit far. Gohan will have his moment. He won't stay in the background. Trust me on that. As for Kariza, I don't know much about the character. It'll be interesting to see how you write his character and estimate his strength. Based on hints from this chapter, I'd say Frieza knows about Kariza going to Earth, but not the other way around, as the latter said his father was dead. Do I detect a plot device for another Super Saiyan transformation? Yep, there's quite a lot Kariza doesn't know. In fact, there are several characters who don't have the full story. Frieza, Vegeta, or at least didn't until now. And yes, another Super Saiyan transformation. But I hoped I could do something original. This wasn't triggered by a friend's death or anything. Goku just desperately wanted to do good like he always does. Now he's finding it's not entirely a good thing. As always, you're doing an amazing job. Interesting development. Might need a special chapter for Metal Frieza, though. I really want to know how he came to be. Uh, the same way Metacooler did, though it's never given too detailed an explanation. Will be interesting how the group on Earth cope with Kariza. I assume he only has the original slash fourth form and would be somewhat weaker than his father and uncle but still in the tens of millions power level region. Will he kill someone? Krillin or Gohan? And, tra and trigger Goku's transformation? It'd be too weird if Goku died as a trigger again, except for Gohan this time. Gohan dying would be simplest. You could just use Shenron rather than needing Purunga again if it was Krillin. I thought I'd try something a little different this time, but you're right with Kariza's power. Ooh, Vegeta's coming back soon. As a Super Saiyan to help Raditz on new Namek against Metafrieza, I assume? Yep. My review wasn't posted for some reason. Well, here it goes again. Great chapter. Again, I'm interested in Metafrieza. Is he going to last longer than Metacooler in the movie? Because I'd like to see him tearing up Cell with the contact power boost Getty would be giving Frieza. Sort of like Zenkai's, wouldn't it? Maybe. I hadn't actually decided yet. We'll see. Oh, God. First Cooler and King Ice Cold. Then Frieza's son. And now Mecha Frieza? Who's next? Frieza's mother? <laughs> I just gave you an idea, didn't I? <laughs> Maybe. Kariza's a nice touch. Would be interesting to see Frieza or Kariza to take Gohan or someone sort of like the whole Vegeta Frieza relationship thing. Probably not now Goku's transformed. But will he kill Kariza? And if not, what will become of him? Final note about Zarbon and Bojack. If I remember right, Zar if I remember right, Bojack has similar skin color to Bojack. Not sure if they're from the same race or not, but it would be interesting if Zarbon developed a super form so we could match the Super Saiyans. Maybe? Hmm. I'm not sure about Zarbon. I'm thinking he has the capability to develop a 100% form like Future Trunks, but that may be it. He can still train and improve like the humans, but the real question is whether or not he really wants to. Great chapter as always, but I do hope Metafrieza lasts longer than what Cooler did or do something completely stupid like take Raditz to a ship to the one weak spot he actually has. With the Getty Star making him stronger from each wound, he could possibly be a huge threat later on, depending on how it goes. It would be interesting to see an alliance between Cell and Frieza, perhaps. Well, it's turning out a little differently here. Raditz actually has a plan that isn't charge the approaching army. So are you going to kill Kariza off, or is he going to be a lasting character? Oh well, anyway, love you story. Um, spoilers, I guess. Sorry. Anyway, I got a lot of questions this chapter, so if your question isn't here, it's because there was another similar question that I already answered. I'm pretty sure I answered each individual point that's been brought up. Join us next time, as Riza's second cousin twice removed, his grandmother and his college roommate attack the Earth. Hercule defeats them all with a single punch. <laughs> That'd certainly be something to see. Anyway, thanks for tuning in for this chapter. Stick around, and I'll read chapter 24. We'll finally finish the Cold Family Saga, and then after that, we'll be getting on with the Android Saga. This is going to be good. Yes, this chapter was late. Sorry, I'm still going to update twice a week, but the Wednesday update will now become a Wednesday or Thursday update, okay? That should make, that should make sure I'm not late too much in the future. Okay, 
due to this chapter being late, that have a knock-on effect and make the next chapter late and so on. So no chapter this Sunday. Sorry. Back to two updates a week next week. One on Wednesday or Thursday and one on Sunday. So, let me get this straight. Bulma glared at Zarbon, who had given up pretending to still be asleep. Everybody else is out there risking their lives to save the planet for the nth time, and you decide to take a nap? Uh, Zarbon retreated a few inches back under the blanket. That's one way of looking at it, I guess. Get your lazy butt out that door! She dragged him out of the bed and kicked him out the front door, throwing a fresh set of clothes after him. If you don't like saving the world, you're living with the wrong people! She called as he pulled the clothes on and took off, grumbling to himself. Damn Earth woman, the only reason I like her anyways. Ugh. What the hell? Zarbon clutched at his head, like he'd just been smacked with a hammer. Where did that giant key come from? He hesitated between the mysterious, nefarious alien force and the wrath of Bulma Brief. It was, of course, no contest. He flew straight for the battle. How I let myself get into these bloody messes, I don't know. Kariza gasped for air as he felt the grip around his neck loosen. He slumped to the floor, his chest heaving. <sighs> I'm still alive? How does that work? Was the first thought to enter his mind. When he rolled over onto his back, he managed to look up at Goku, whose entire body was pulsing with Super Saiyan power. Look what you pushed me to, Goku said. His voice strained as his internal struggle continued. You should know better than to mess with forces you don't understand! Kariza trembled. What? What are you? I'm a Super Saiyan, Kariza. This is what I warned you about. This power killed Cooler after he killed Frieza. And when King Cold came here for revenge, he was also killed by a Super Saiyan. Now do you understand? What you're dealing with! You... weren't lying? Kariza asked hesitantly. Cool? Killed my father? Goku nodded. We didn't start this war against your family. But we will end it! He tightened his fists. No matter what it takes! His aura flared up around him, flattening the terrain around him. So what will it be, son of Frieza? Are you going to go out like the rest of your kind? Blindly attacking a superior force out of arrogance, refusing to believe you can ever lose. There was no reply for a moment, and something seemed off about Kariza to Goku. It took him a few seconds to realize what it was, simply because it seemed so out of place. Kariza was crying. The Frost Demons were the terror of the universe, despots of entire galaxies, destroyer of worlds. And here was one breaking down in tears. There was betrayal behind his sadness. His family had fought itself. His father had been killed by one of their own. And now they were no longer the dominant power in the universe. These Saiyans had risen to the top. Even his mighty grandfather had fallen. It was all too much to take in. That decided it for Goku. This wasn't a tyrant. It wasn't an unfeeling monster. It was a frightened, orphaned child, far from home. Kariza couldn't be more than his race's equivalent of ten years old, perhaps even younger. The human inside beat the same. Compassion won out. The beast's howls faded from his mind. So it was that when Zarbon arrived, he was greeted with the strangest thing he'd ever seen. A Super Saiyan, normally a violent, raging figure, was crouching on the ground, cradling a juvenile frost demons in his arms, and whispering, It's okay, Josh, now. It's going to be okay. The alien ex-soldier was struck silent by the moment. This was different. He'd been expecting a battle. Vengeance. This was... Reconciliation. Between these two races, was that possible? Vegeta blasted through another wall. Yes, it was faint at first, but it's getting stronger. 
Frieza's true body is on this ship somewhere. He never learned to control his key, and a life force is a life force. I'm coming for you, Frieza! He sprinted down a corridor, unheeding to the alarms he was setting off. He was too close now. Frieza wouldn't stop him. The door to the inner chamber exploded inwards. It was a roughly spherical, dimly lit gray area, the pattern of electrical circuits on the wall constantly shifting and changing. Wires of varying length hung loosely from the ceiling. Vegeta burst inside, the grin on his face fading, when he saw what awaited him at the center of the room. There stood his goal. The disembodied head of Frieza, sustained by dozens of wires, pieces of circuitry, and various life support functions. However, between the Saiyan Prince and his enemy stood another meta Frieza, gleaming in the dim light. Come now, the real Frieza said with a mocking smile. Surely you didn't think I'd leave myself unguarded, did you? <laughs> As if to illustrate his point, two more meta Frieza's detached themselves from the shadows, one on either side of Vegeta. To be honest, I hadn't really planned this far ahead, Vegeta replied. I was more or less counting on being caught by your pet army long before now. Ah, Vegeta, Frieza sighed. A Super Saiyan after all these years, but in his heart, a stupid little monkey to the end. Hrah! Transforming into a Super Saiyan again, Vegeta's reply came in the form of a hurled yellow energy ball. But before it hit his target, the Meta Frieza standing guard intercepted it, catching the blast and containing the detonation inside his hand. Vegeta choked. The speed it must have taken to catch that so nonchalantly. Not to mention the strength to emerge without so much as scratched paintwork. Oh my my, Frieza chuckled. Am I scaring you? <laughs> the meta Frieza's on either side of the prince raised one hand, shimmering white energy flickering to life. Well, this has been an amusing little chat, but I for one am getting bored. Goodbye, Vegeta. There's a quiet, fluid noise and Raditz materialized in the middle of the room. V Vegeta! He yelled, grabbing the other Saiyan's arm. I only got a few seconds lead on him! He turned to Frieza. He's been talking to Vegeta. Say, you've got your army on some sort of autopilot, haven't you? With that, the pair vanished. Frieza's eyes widened as he realized the implications of what Raditz had just said and done. Too late. Raditz and Vegeta appeared about a mile from the Getty Star, a meter or so above the ground, whereupon they bumped down to ground level, throwing up a small dust cloud. What? Vegeta began, but then a loud crash rocked the entire planet. The Getty Star shuddered, seeming to deflate a little. S sparks hissed around the edges, and arcs of electricity shot up and down the machine. Vegeta continued, What the hell was all that about? <laughs> Raditz grinned. It was pretty obvious that we weren't going to outfight Frieza, but his army seemed to get less intelligent as they continued to chase me around the planet with instant transmission. What does that have to do with anything? Well, they started behaving much more systematically, like machines set to run on autopilot. I figured out it must have been due to Frieza's preoccupation with you. You found him and were keeping him busy somehow. So I reckon they were programmed to just automatically follow me wherever I teleported to, as Frieza couldn't be bothered to directly control them while dealing with you at the same time. I see. Vegeta stood up, gazing at the Getty Star, which was now belching out smoke. So they all followed you inside the Getty Star, into Frieza's central chamber. Raditz nodded, which I could find thanks to your energy signature. The army probably arrived about half a second after we left. And there were hundreds of those meta Frieza's, Vegeta grinned. There's no way they could all fit inside there. Which means Frieza is... Raditz joined in a smile, buried under tons of compacted metal. Or maybe one of them even materialized inside of him blowing him apart from the inside. He can't sense his key at all anymore. Well, I must admit that was a pretty clever idea, Vegeta told the other saying. But frankly, that thing is becoming an eyesore. It's best if there's no trace left of it. He raised one hand in the direction of the Getty Star, forming a ball of shining energy as he spoke his power in front of his palm. Big back! Oh! The Prince of All Saiyans toppled wordlessly face first into the dust. Raditz had struck, relatively gently, at the base of his skull. He was tough. It'd only keep him down for a few minutes. I'm sorry, Vegeta. I couldn't let you do that. I can sense a lot of Namekians inside, which would, at least, explain why I haven't seen any since getting here. 
Hey, King Kai. Uh, what? Oh, hey, Reddit. Well done. King Kai's disembodied voice congratulated me. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Well, this hasn't taken too long, and I got to kill Frieza, so I'll forgive you for dragging me out of bed this morning. But can you explain the situation to the Namix? I've got to get Vegeta out of here before he does something I'll regret. Right you are, King Kai replied. The damage you did to the Getty Star, the security systems will be offline. They'll be able to get out on their own. Well, guess I'll tell them what happened now. Ciao! Hm. Raditz hauled Vegeta over his shoulder, hearing the prince's mumbled, half-awake daydreams. I am invincible, Super Kakura Frieza. Ugh. What did you eat for breakfast, lead weights? Raditz complained, before using instant transmission and heading off again. Raditz arrived back on Earth. Vegeta safely deposited on an empty planet, nobody to kill, with a habitable atmosphere, left next to food, supplies, and a serviceable spaceship. The previous owner had had so many, he probably wouldn't have even noticed it was missing. I'd have loved to continue our fight, Vegeta, but this isn't the time. Neither of us were at full strength. We both had realized there were even higher levels of power we could aspire to climb to, and I really need to be alive and well when these androids arrive. If anything happened to launch Goku or all friends because I wasn't there, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. He sensed Goku and a few other fighters over to the west, heading over with normal flight. He'd had quite enough of instant transmission for one day. As he approached, he noticed one mysterious power that stood out. It was almost like Frieza's family, but had less of their evil taint. He landed in the middle of a rocky plain, seeing Krillin race past him. Watch out! The bald warrior was saying, They're making a move! They? Raditz thought, content to watch for the moment. He was shocked to see Kariza, back in his first form, sprint between Krillin and himself. Some kind of miniature Frieza? Kariza put on an extra burst of speed, and Krillin fell short, his lunge missing by about half a meter as Kariza sped on. Krillin tossed something to Goku, who slid around the corner and jumped at Kariza. His hand thrust forward and tapped Kariza lightly on the shoulder with a baseball. Gotcha, Kariza! You're out! He said, grinning. Huh! <laughs> Kariza folded his arms, marching over to the back of the batting queue. Next time, I'll use my final form. Let's see if you can catch me then. Well, I could become a Super Saiyan again, Goku responded, his smile widening. The pair laughed. Raditz just stared, speechless. Uh... Goku? Kariza? Baseball? Super Saiyan? Goku rubbed his head. Oh boy, it's a long story. To be precise, it took most of an hour to tell, and a similar amount of time for Raditz to recount his experiences on New Namek. Goku's older brother met and shook hands with Kariza, amazed at the possibility of an innocent frost demon. The baseball game, which had apparently been Yamcha's idea, Resumed after Raditz left for home, Goku's team won by two points. Much fun was had by all, except Piccolo. He was in the wasteland, practicing his scowl. Then the fighters had to go home and explain they'd spent all day alternately fighting and playing sports with a junior alien warlord. This was not received well by Chi-Chi in particular. Kariza, for his part, had to stay on Earth for a while, at least until he could get a ship built, so he took up residence at Capsule Corp. However... Even when Bulma and her father had finished preparing a ship, he fended his departure off with a string of excuses about the weather, previous appointments, and so on. Eventually, they dropped the matter altogether and built him a permanent room. And that was pretty much that. Nail and Zarbon discussed this one day. I guess, Zarbon said, he's realized what we have. Right, it's too. There's something about this planet. Nail, leaning against the wall, nodded in agreement sipping from his glass of water. Fekion's only drank water for sustenance, but is still festooned with strawed, useless fake umbrella thing, etc. I know. It's just amazingly... diverse, I guess. It's got all these different climates and places. Namek is all the same. Although, personally, I'll never get tired of grassy islands. In indeed. Zarbon stretched out on his deck chair, resplendent in floral shirt, camo shorts, and sandals. He was constantly making efforts to let go of himself and just relax, but Bulma usually put a stop to it and had him back in shape before long. This was one of those glorious periods before she intervened. Not to mention all the people. Aren't humans just fascinating? I know what you mean. 
Nail finished his water, setting the glass down. So many flaws and failings, but overall they still manage to shine. And they always come through when it counts most. Plus, I can tell you from first-hand experience that the girls are amazing. Ah, uh, uh, but you mammocks don't do that, do you? Nail looked away, embarrassed, and Zarbon laughed out loud. Training, of course, continued. There were still almost three years to prepare. The fighters all trained even harder now. Goku and Raditz' training picked up now that they could fight as Super Saiyans, though Raditz held an early edge due to more experience with the form. Gohan was in a strange position. His alien DNA meant that sparring with most human fighters would be a futile exercise and laughably easy for the child, but the adult Saiyans were far above him. Luckily, while Piccolo was antisocial as ever, Tien and Nail were able to give him a decent challenge, and the three regularly met up to train together, although as far as Chi-Chi knew, Gohan was still helping Goku. If she ever decided to go out and watch or join in the training herself, there'd be trouble. The fighters who'd been defeated by Kuriza now trained even harder, knowing by all accounts the androids were going to be even more powerful. The focus was not just on increasing their power now, but also on developing new techniques and ways to outsmart superior foes. And so it continued, for three years, as meanwhile, in a laboratory hidden in the mountains, Dr. Jiro set about creating his artificial monsters. I've had some questions regarding what happened to Metafrieza and Vegeta in the future timeline, and I fully intend to answer them. In this version of events, everyone was feeling somewhat less active, enjoying a seemingly indefinite period of peace and Raditz, in this state of mind, went back to bed with launch instead of going to fight Frieza. He resolved to go and check on things later that afternoon, but by then, it was too late. <laughs> Frieza's head, hooked up to its life support systems within the Getty Star, chuckled as he looked upon his captive. Wires were coiled around Vegeta's arms and legs, suspending him halfway up the walls. Thinking you could fight me all on your own, Vegeta. My whole army! What a fool. Frieza's grin widened. Well, now you're going to give me that Super Saiyan energy of yours. It'll be an excellent fuel source for the Getty Star. Come now. I don't have all day. The wires lit up with electric fire as they ripped the power out of Vegeta's body. His head slumped forwards, but a faint murmur escaped his mouth. What's that? Frieza asked mockingly. Last words. A final confession. Begging for your life. You're wrong, Frieza, Vegeta said weakly. I haven't lost. What are you talking about? Vegeta's head snapped up as he powered back up to Super Saiyan. You've taken me right into the heart of your power, you idiot! Yeah! He forced his power outwards, gripping the wires holding him as he pumped energy through them. What's this? Frieza raised an eyebrow as a pair of Metafrieza's paced back and forth behind him. Trying to give me more energy than I can handle? Overload my circuits or something like that? Really, I expected more from you. You should know better than that. <laughs> Vegeta screamed, the light coursing out of his body intensifying into pure white waves of force. What? What's this? Frieza's scanners were going ballistic. Where's this power coming from? What did you do? The Metafreezes twitched and spasmed, collapsing to the floor. This is my life energy, Frieza! Vegeta roared. This is what you wanted, isn't it? No! Stop! You'll kill yourself! Frieza tried to retract the wires, but Vegeta gripped them unflinchingly, pouring his entire essence into the Getty Star. He bellowed as internal explosions rocked the construct. Both sections began to break off as Vegeta's destructive energy spread throughout the entire vessel. The surge of power reached the core, and it was all over. Within seconds, there was nothing left of the Getty Star, Vegeta, or Frieza. New Namek was left warped, marked by a gigantic crater that visibly altered its shape. The Saiyans had had their revenge. When King Cold returned to his empire after his defeat at Raditz's hands, he encountered Kariza with his experience of failure on Earth, discouraged his grandson from making a move on the planet. 
So in the timeline unaltered by time travel, Kariza, after Cold's death, set himself up as the new master of the galaxy and came to be just as feared a ruler as Frieza had been. And he had more freedom to exercise his rule as his family was no longer around to counsel and restrain him. Oh, and in the main DBZ timeline, Frieza was still alive, albeit mechanized, to slap Carrizo around the head and dispel any silly thoughts he might have about attacking Earth and stealing Frieza's shot at revenge. <clears throat> well, anyway, Q&A. Hmm, Piccolo getting pwned. You, my friend, are brave. What I notice here is that Goku sort of stole original Gohan's transformation trigger, but you made it work. But how will the Demi Saiyan now transform? Will Vegeta betray Raditz and run away again? How will he transform indeed? I guess you'll have to wait and see. Vegeta didn't run away. However, he's not going to be happy with the outcome. We haven't seen the last of him for sure. So, is Piccolo really weak enough that a child first form Ice Gen could defeat him? Piccolo was coming back Piccolo on coming back to life was roughly equal to Nail, mid 10,000s power level. They hadn't been training for very long when Carrizo arrived, and his first swarm was probably in the low hundreds of thousands. I kind of hope Carrizo is spared and becomes a good guy. It's really, uh, it's really an interesting race that should be utilized more in canon. The fifth and maybe even a sixth form can help him stay relevant. But yeah, amazing chapter. Probably the best one yet. Good job. Ta-da! And these questions are about chapter 15. Could Vegeta really break up so absurdly only after being beaten by Goku? That would only make him more enraged, dude. How come he had a change of character, thinking, opinion all of a sudden? It makes no sense, knowing Vegeta at least. It's kind of like when you realize he was outclassed against Frieza's second and fourth forms of DBZ. Only since it was a Saiyan this time, it wasn't quite so bad. Why is Goku so warrior-like and everyone's accepting everyone's impromptu decisions? Be a little more realistic, dude. Goku does have his warrior-like moments. See, the main villain battles in DBZ. He's not always a humorous character, and everyone's accepting everyone's impromptu decisions? Are they? So, it seems, announcer voice, the time of the androids is drawing near. Will our heroes be ready to fight this new menace? Find out next time on Dragon... B I already did a joke on this about 10 chapters ago, didn't I? P.S. Where's Kai Chapter 2? It'll be done when it's done. It's not that important anyway, and not everybody liked it. But since some did enjoy it, I'll continue it eventually. And that is my announcer voice. Hope you all enjoyed Chapter 23 to 24 of Break Through the Limit. Next time, we'll be starting on the Android Saga. With Raditz and Goku now Super Saiyans, how will the fight between the androids differ? Will it be even easier? Or will something come up that'll change the course of events again? Find out next time and break through the limit. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe. Bye!